The main purpose of sunglasses is to help shade your eyes from the sun or bright lights so your vision is not hindered, and also to reduce the risk of damaging your eyesight. However, if you ask any video game character why he or she is wearing sunglasses, they'll likely tell you for style. Just as costumes help create an iconic image for characters, sunglasses are the accessory that may have a real practical use, but more likely than not, they will be used for style and to make a character look cool. There occasionally is an alternative use where the sunglasses provide or enhance abilities, but in the end, sunglasses affect the appearance and initial appeal of the characters. But which video game characters have the coolest sunglasses? Make sure you put coolest in quotation marks, since adding sunglasses to a character is quite cliche at this point. Well that's what I'm looking at in this video. The top 10 coolest sunglasses in video games. Number 10, Roy Koopa. When you look at the seven Koopalings from the Mario franchise, each one of them has a main feature that makes them stick out. So if you forget their names, you have another way of identifying your favorite. If you don't remember Roy's name, you can just say the Koopa with the red or hot pink sunglasses. The sunglasses are iconic since Roy would look very boring without them. They're so prominent with Roy's character that he was actually named after his sunglasses. The origins of his name come from singer Roy Orbison, who wrote and sang songs such as Pretty Woman, Walking Down the Street, it's actually just called Oh Pretty Woman, but of course I have to sing part of the chorus. Roy Orbison was also known for wearing similar sunglasses when performing. If it weren't for Roy Koopa's sunglasses, we might not even know him as Roy today. Number 9, The Elite Beat Agents. Considering these guys are based off the standard design for secret agents, sunglasses are of course part of the classic uniform. If you want me to give a more legitimate reason why they wear sunglasses, eh, I can't do that. Everyone on the team wears sunglasses, so it must be part of the uniform, since we never see the agents put them on to fit specific situations. I'm looking into this way too much. The Elite Beat agents are secret agents who solve people's problems by dancing rhythmically to songs, and if they sync up with the song well enough, they solve the problems. These can range from helping someone babysit to helping a little girl mourn her deceased father. Yeah, it's pretty sad. The saddest use of Chicago's You're the Inspiration to date. Number 8. Gex the Gecko. He's following a 90s sunglasses style, along with the trend of wisecracking characters and platforming video games. While in-game, Gex does not usually wear his sunglasses. It was all about the appeal of him on the game's cover. It was such a good idea to put sunglasses on him apparently that Crystal Dynamics put the same pose in the shades on the cover twice. He also eventually wore goggles, but I think that's too different from sunglasses to count. In the first game he was in, they literally just added sunglasses to a gecko, likely for that coolness factor, similar to what sunglasses did for Duke Nukem. The main difference between Gex and Duke Nukem is Gex is more family friendly, and he's not human. And he didn't try to come back in a video game in 2011, well after his prime, but I don't think anyone wants to talk about that game. Number 7, Earl from Toe Jam and Earl. In the same vein of Gex, these aliens were dressed in cliche cool clothing of their time. What else do you need besides sunglasses? Backwards hats? Maybe have your characters know how to rollerblade? I always liked how the bridge of Earl's sunglasses were almost as thick as the lenses. It made them feel unique and as if Earl did not have normal eyes because he's an alien. Unfortunately, in the third game, they redesigned him where he just had normal sunglasses. How disappointing. Number 6, K-Dash from the King of Fighters series. He almost always has his signature sunglasses on in promotional artwork and in some of his intros and outros in the game series. However, he didn't start wearing his sunglasses full-time when fighting until King of Fighters 13. Although it sounds like a better call not to wear sunglasses, considering all the dark stages in King of Fighters, the glasses do add to his look, so it's all good. Frankly, he needs these sunglasses to differentiate himself from his counterpart Kyo Kusanagi, whose DNA has been injected into K-Dash, just roll with it, it makes more sense in the context of the story, giving him uncontrollable fire powers, which makes him more edgy, along with his backstory of losing his memory. His sunglasses have this reddish tint, which not only suit his style based on physical appearance, but it suits his other attributes, mainly the fire power and because he's sort of an anti-hero. His fighting style is also called pure violence if you want to relate that to the reddish tint, so yeah. As I said, edgy. Number 5, 
Proto Man from the Mega Man series. While I am good at pointing out who has awesome sunglasses, I mean look at that, sunglasses under a visor? I'm not too knowledgeable on the Mega Man series, so I'm going to get a guest from another YouTube channel, AT from Software Agents Corp, to help me cover this one. And he'll also talk during a few other Capcom entries later on this list. Uh, not implying that there are other Capcom characters to talk about. Hey, yeah, let's just forget I said anything. Uh, let's restart this number. Hey, everybody. AT from Software Agents here. Next up is Proto Man, Mega Man's aloof older brother from the Mega Man series. I don't think Proto Man has ever been shown without his sunglasses. I mean, he's even taken off his helmet, but not the shades. For all we know, the shades could be his eyes. Maybe Dr. Light designed Proto Man poorly and his eyes are just really sensitive, so he has to wear sunglasses under his visor to protect himself from the sun. That or they were really convinced that sunglasses make someone look cooler. Like, Proto Man is so cool he has sunglasses under his sunglasses, even though that's a visor, but they serve similar purposes. He's so cool that he barely shows up in games where he's not a mini-boss, like Mega Man 4. It's like he's too cool to have a big role in these games. Hey look, it's Proto Man! And he's gone. Number 4, Funky Kong from the Donkey Kong series. He's portrayed as a surfer, so of all the characters I've discussed so far, He's probably the only one that actually wears sunglasses for the purpose of eye protection from potentially harmful UV rays. Considering he's outside constantly on the beach, if he truly is surfing in his free time. Even if the surfboard is just for show, his shop is located outside, so he's always out in the hot sun of the beach or the jungle or wherever the games are located. As a result, wearing sunglasses is the optimal choice for eyewear for a guy who has to stand out in the sun all day selling balloons and other fun presents. Here's a present for you! Number 3 Our next pick is Captain Commando, star of a Final Fight clone and Capcom's former mascot. Captain Commando fights crime in the future with the help of a mummy, a baby, and a ninja. Thanks to his Captain goggles, he transforms from an ordinary citizen into Captain Commando. These goggles also give him enhanced vision. It's a shame Captain Commando has basically become a forgotten hero of Capcom. If you think the sci-fi futuristic look is too cheesy, you can at least appreciate that he transforms into his superhero persona by putting sunglasses over his normal glasses. So not only are these sunglasses for style, but they actually have a use in helping him transform. Being useful and stylish is enough to get you high placement on this list. The only excuse you could give for not noticing Captain Commando in his own game is that you were too distracted by the rest of his team. I mean, what are these characters? A mummy wearing Piccolo's casual clothes from Dragon Ball Z filler? A Geki from the original Street Fighter? And, uh, Koinmatron? Or as AT put it more succinctly, a mummy, a baby, and a ninja. But of course I need to take the longer route when explaining things. <laughs> However, that likely isn't the case, since at this point, Captain Commando is probably more well known from his appearances in the Marvel vs. Capcom series, considering how rare Captain Commando's origin game is today. Number 2 Next up is the nefarious Albert Wesker from the Resident Evil series. Wesker is the closest thing the Resident Evil games have to a main villain. In his many appearances, Wesker usually sports a cool looking pair of shades. If you look at the intro to Resident Evil 1, it looks like Wesker's more concerned with looking cool than actually being a cop. Maybe a hint that he's a traitor! Whoa, 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 spoilers! Not everyone knows that Wesker betrays his cop allies of stars, despite how this intro really doesn't hide anything. And that he's the well-known main villain of the franchise. Oh, all right, never mind, you may proceed. And in Ultimate Marvel vs. Capcom 3, Wesker becomes more powerful and gets a speed boost when his glasses get broken or taken off. Looking at that detail, even if his sunglasses don't power him up in the Resident Evil series, they still provide that boost. When you think about it, the sunglasses actually hinder his abilities if he doesn't remove them. He sacrifices his power for style. That, or he's arrogant since he doesn't need all of his power to fight you. That really fits his personality. Plus, these sunglasses are custom made, so why wouldn't he wear them? Number 1, Johnny Cage from Mortal Kombat. The reason he is number 1 is because his sunglasses embody so many aspects of his personality. In Mortal Kombat 1 and 2, he put on sunglasses after his victories to gloat. From Mortal Kombat Trilogy onwards, he never takes off his sunglasses when fighting, 
so it's a sign of arrogance considering MK also has a lot of dark stages. Pulling a Cory Hart and wearing your sunglasses at night could be dangerous in this dimly lit alley. Then again in MK9 when Stryker shines his flashlight directly in your eyes to stun you before his x-ray attack, Johnny reacts like every other character with unprotected eyes, so maybe those sunglasses offer no eye protection. On the flip side, however, maybe Stryker has the brightest flashlight in the world. Johnny Cage is also a very cheesy character, spitting out one-liners that you either love or cringe at. And the sunglasses can be just as cheesily cool or cheesily lame, reflecting on how much you love or hate his talking. Finally, since I mentioned being placed high on this list, let alone number one, means the sunglasses have some sort of unique use, what can these do to help Johnny in an unconventional way? Well, really they're just iconic to his cocky image, but they did have one major indirect use in the first Mortal Kombat movie. Johnny, already motivated by the death of his friend Art Lean, challenged Goro, the mighty four-armed Shokan. At the start of the match, Goro crushed Johnny's sunglasses, his $500 sunglasses, which frankly seemed to be the motivation Johnny needed to defeat this beast, considering that's what he focused on in his one-liner before he nearly dropped Goro off a cliff. So by my logic, the sunglasses led to Johnny Cage's true power when broken. Consider that the reason they are useful or don't. At least consider the sunglasses cost $500, which probably makes them the most expensive ones here, unless Wesker really likes to spend a lot more on his custom-made shades. Plus, Johnny seems to have an infinite supply of sunglasses available somewhere in his pants when one pair breaks, as shown in MK9. Not to mention, the sunglasses seem to be hereditary, since his daughter now wears them in MKX. How cute. Either way, Cage's sunglasses complete the list of the coolest sunglasses in video games in my opinion. So, agree? Disagree? Let me know your favorite sunglasses in video games. Thank you all for watching. Gameplay footage and commentary that was not done by me or the Cami White sound clips from Super Street Fighter 4 was done by AT of Software Agents Corp. Check out his channel if you'd like for video game reviews and a few extras. And if you want to see my last video on accessories of video game characters, you can check out my top 10 most useful video game hats list. So I'll just stall while you decide what you want to click. If you want to click anything, you can just let the video end otherwise while I play some more cami sound clips to signify it's the end of the video. Good night! It's all over. The end. You're dead meat. Mission complete.